Welcome to the Hippo English Language Olympiad Preliminary Listening Examination. Good luck from Gatehouse Awards. This is the Gatehouse Awards ESOL International Classic Beat One Listening Examination. This examination consists of three tasks. In each task, you will listen and answer the questions. You will hear each recording twice. You will have one minute to read the questions before you listen. You may now open your booklet. Task 1. Listen and answer the questions. You now have one minute to read the questions. Hello there. Do you need any help today? Oh, hi. Yes, please. I'm trying to find a book for my friend. Something she will enjoy. I can help with that, but I need to ask you a few questions first, if that's OK. What kind of books is she into? Does she like novels, biographies, travel books, or perhaps books about history? Um, good question. She's read a book about the life of Winston Churchill recently. I don't think she enjoyed it, and she has a lot of travel books already. Hmm, I'd recommend a novel then. Let me show you this one. It's quite funny. To be honest, I'm more into watching films than reading, so I'll just take it. I know what you mean. After spending a whole day talking to people about books, I don't read much myself. I prefer to go for a run or see my friends. Anyway. If your friend doesn't like it, she can come back and exchange it for another book. Well, her birthday is not for another two weeks. Will she have enough time? Oh, yes. You can bring back anything within 30 days after the date of sale. Just make sure she keeps the receipt. We don't offer refunds, though. That's perfect, thanks. Would you like to get a birthday card as well while you're here? Good idea. I like this one, but it says it's four pounds. That's rather expensive. Yes, that's our best range, and they aren't cheap. I'd rather spend the money on some flowers, or maybe a box of chocolates. I understand. Unfortunately, we don't sell those. Would you like me to take the book to the till for you? Yes, please. How much is it? Let me see. The full price is £16, but we currently have a 20% discount, so it's going to be £12.80. Would you like me to wrap it up for you for an extra pound? That would take it to £13.80. No, thanks. I'll just pay for the book. Can I pay by card? I'm afraid our card machine is out of order today, but there is a cash point just outside of the shop if you don't have any cash on you. I might have just enough on me. Let me see. Yeah, I think I've got the right amount. You won't even have to give me any change. That's perfect. Thank you, and sorry you couldn't use your card today. Now listen to task one again. Hello there. Do you need any help today? Oh, hi. Yes, please. I'm trying to find a book for my friend. Something she will enjoy. 
I can help with that, but I need to ask you a few questions first, if that's okay. What kind of books is she into? Does she like novels, biographies, travel books, or perhaps books about history? Um, good question. She's read a book about the life of Winston Churchill recently, but I don't think she enjoyed it, and she has a lot of travel books already. Hmm, I'd recommend a novel then. Let me show you this one. It's quite funny. To be honest, I'm more into watching films than reading, so I'll just take it. I know what you mean. After spending a whole day talking to people about books, I don't read much myself. I prefer to go for a run or see my friends. Anyway, if your friend doesn't like it, she can come back and exchange it for another book. Well, her birthday is not for another two weeks. Will she have enough time? Oh, yes. You can bring back anything within 30 days after the date of sale. Just make sure she keeps the receipt. We don't offer refunds, though. That's perfect, thanks. Would you like to get a birthday card as well while you're here? Good idea. I like this one, but it says it's £4. That's rather expensive. Yes, that's our best range, and they aren't cheap. I'd rather spend the money on some flowers, or maybe a box of chocolates. I understand. Unfortunately, we don't sell those. Would you like me to take the book to the till for you? Yes, please. How much is it? Let me see. The full price is £16, but we currently have a 20% discount, so it's going to be £12.80. Would you like me to wrap it up for you for an extra pound? That would take it to £13.80. No, thanks. I'll just pay for the book. Can I pay by card? I'm afraid our card machine is out of order today, but there is a cash point just outside of the shop if you don't have any cash on you. I might have just enough on me. Let me see. Yeah, I think I've got the right amount. You won't even have to give me any change. That's perfect. Thank you, and sorry you couldn't use your card today. This is the end of task one. Task two. Listen and answer the questions. You now have one minute to read the questions. And now, I'd like to tell you about the Get to School project. This project provides free bicycles to students who have to walk a long way to get to school. A few years ago, many companies started to offer bikes for rent in many big cities in countries such as Japan or China. These bike sharing companies rented the bikes cheaply for short periods of time. They hoped to make a lot of money. Soon there were too many companies and too many bikes on the streets. Because there were so many bikes everywhere and it didn't cost much to rent them, people didn't look after them. They left them by the side of the road, on the pavement or even threw them into rivers. A lot of the companies which rented bikes were not making enough money they had to close down. Many of them left behind lots of brand new bikes. A businessman called Mr. Wynne understood that these bikes didn't have any value where they were, but he realised 
they could be very useful in poorer countries. He thought that if he could reduce the time children spend walking to school, they could spend more time studying. They would get better grades and have a better chance of getting a good job. So giving them a free bike was the perfect answer. Mr. Wynne needed about $400,000 for his project. He decided to offer half the money himself and the other $200,000 was given by other companies. Mr. Wynne then bought thousands of new bikes from the companies that failed and sent them to various countries. Mr. Wynne said it was easier to find the money than to move the bikes abroad but a lot of people helped him to do it. After the bikes arrived, they were changed to make them more useful for students. The rental bikes used to have a really complicated lock, so staff changed this for a simple lock with a key. They also added a second seat on the back of the bikes so that two children could ride to school on one bike. When the bikes were almost ready, the project staff had one more great idea. They replaced the bike's regular tyres with a special tyre that can't go flat. After all the changes, Mr Wynne says that each bike costs his company about $35. Giving out the bikes is taking a long time. Mr Wynne wants them to go to the students who need them the most. The project is working with governments and schools to find poor students who walk around two hours a day to and back from school. The project has already taken around 22,500 bikes to poor countries and it has given away over 1,000 bikes. Mr Wynne hopes to give away as many as 100,000 bikes and also start the programme in other parts of the world. Now listen to task two again. And now I'd like to tell you about the Get to School project. This project provides free bicycles to students who have to walk a long way to get to school. A few years ago, many companies started to offer bikes for rent in many big cities in countries such as Japan or China. These bike sharing companies rented the bikes cheaply for short periods of time. They hoped to make a lot of money. Soon there were too many companies and too many bikes on the streets. Because there were so many bikes everywhere and it didn't cost much to rent them, people didn't look after them. They left them by the side of the road, on the pavement or even threw them into rivers. A lot of the companies which rented bikes were not making enough money. They had to close down. Many of them left behind lots of brand new bikes. A businessman called Mr Wynne understood that these bikes didn't have any value where they were, but he realised they could be very useful in poorer countries. He thought that if he could reduce the time children spend walking to school, they could spend more time studying. They would get better grades and have a better chance of getting a good job. So giving them a free bike was the perfect answer. Mr. Wynne needed about $400,000 for his project. He decided to offer half the money himself and the other $200,000 was given by other companies. Mr Wynne then bought thousands of new bikes from the companies that failed and sent them to various countries. Mr Wynne said it was easier to find the money than to move the bikes abroad, but a lot of people helped him to do it. After the bikes arrived, they were changed to make them more useful for students. The rental bikes used to have a really complicated lock, so staff changed this for a simple lock with a key. 
They also added a second seat on the back of the bikes so that two children could ride to school on one bike. When the bikes were almost ready, the project staff had one more great idea. They replaced the bike's regular tyres with a special tyre that can't go flat. After all the changes, Mr Wynne says that each bike costs his company about $35. Giving out the bikes is taking a long time. Mr Wynne wants them to go to the students who need them the most. The project is working with governments and schools to find poor students who walk around two hours a day to and back from school. The project has already taken around 22,500 bikes to poor countries and it has given away over 1,000 bikes. Mr Wynne hopes to give away as many as 100,000 bikes and also start the programme in other parts of the world. This is the end of task two. Task three, listen and answer the questions. You now have one minute to read the questions. Speaker 1 This year, my husband and I spent our holidays in the mountains in northern Italy. I have to say, we experienced quite a few issues to start with. Our hotel room was very small and the bed was very uncomfortable. We complained to the manager, but unfortunately the hotel was fully booked. My husband and I decided that we would try to have a nice time anyway. I must say, the location of the hotel was amazing. You could see the mountains from our room and the dining area, which we absolutely loved. The food was really good and reasonably priced, so no complaints there. I have to say though, I did order pizza almost every day. Speaker 2 I can't say we had a nice time on holiday this year. In fact, my wife wanted to return a week earlier than planned, but I convinced her not to. We travelled to Spain because we wanted to enjoy the weather, but unfortunately it rained almost the whole time. The bad weather meant we couldn't enjoy the scenery at all. Because we couldn't go swimming or sunbathing, we spent most of our time in cafes, eating cakes and ice cream. It cost us a fortune. The only good thing I can say about this holiday is that we bought a really nice set of coffee cups, made by hand in one of the local towns. Other than that, I really don't think I'll be returning any time soon. Speaker 3 My friend and I travelled to Scotland in August. We decided to go camping. We wanted to save money on accommodation and instead treat ourselves to a nice dinner in a different restaurant every night. Also. We wanted to get to know other travellers, 
and campsites make that easier than hotels. In fact, we did meet a nice couple from Slovakia that we got on really well with. They've invited us to visit later in the year. That reminds me, I need to get them a nice souvenir from my country. Also, the views from the campsite were fantastic. Unfortunately, my friend broke her wrist during one of the walks and so we had to end our holiday a few days early. Now listen to task three again. Speaker one. This year, my husband and I spent our holidays in the mountains in northern Italy. I have to say, we experienced quite a few issues to start with. Our hotel room was very small and the bed was very uncomfortable. We complained to the manager, but unfortunately the hotel was fully booked. My husband and I decided that we would try to have a nice time anyway. I must say, the location of the hotel was amazing. You could see the mountains from our room and the dining area, which we absolutely loved. The food was really good and reasonably priced, so no complaints there. I have to say though, I did order pizza almost every day. Speaker 2 I can't say we had a nice time on holiday this year. In fact, my wife wanted to return a week earlier than planned, but I convinced her not to. We travelled to Spain because we wanted to enjoy the weather, but unfortunately it rained almost the whole time. The bad weather meant we couldn't enjoy the scenery at all. Because we couldn't go swimming or sunbathing, we spent most of our time in cafes, eating cakes and ice cream. It cost us a fortune. The only good thing I can say about this holiday is that we bought a really nice set of coffee cups made by hand in one of the local towns. Other than that, I really don't think I'll be returning any time soon. Speaker 3 My friend and I travelled to Scotland in August. We decided to go camping. We wanted to save money on accommodation and instead treat ourselves to a nice dinner in a different restaurant every night. Also, we wanted to get to know other travellers and campsites make that easier than hotels. In fact, we did meet a nice couple from Slovakia that we got on really well with. They've invited us to visit later in the year. That reminds me, I need to get them a nice souvenir from my country. Also, the views from the campsite were fantastic. Unfortunately, my friend broke her wrist during one of the walks and so we had to end our holiday a few days early. This is the end of task three. This is the end of the listening examination.